cataractcoach.com. Why is such an odd shaped chopper? So why does the surgeon use this funny looking instrument during surgery? Let's look at this case carefully here. Capsule been stained with tripan blue dye, getting that rexus done. And as the rexus goes around, you're looking here, and what is that on the cornea there? What's that big central bulbous looking? Of course, the patient had a prior penetrating keratoplasty or corneal transplant. And the patient had been seen pretty well for many years until the cataract developed. And so now it's time for cataract surgery. Now, fortunately, this patient's central cornea is pretty reasonable, it's clear, reasonable endothelial cell count, and also not much distortion. And so the patient, well, again, was seeing well because the central cornea is pretty good. Now, the peripheral cornea is a little bit distorted here, and that's okay. But what that means is, look, as the instruments go inside the eye, they're going to appear distorted because your view, you're looking through the cornea too, right? In the central cornea, where you're going to operate and do the nucleus removal, it's going to look just fine. But the catch is going to be there in the peripheral cornea. Oh, I like that technique more. Dispersive viscoelastic can protect that cornea. Last thing you want to do is do a catheter that's going to push the patient over the edge. So watch. As the phaco probe goes in, it looks normal. But look, as the chopper goes in, you'll see it looks distorted because the cornea is distorted. So there's the phaco probe going inside the eye. Here's the chop. There you go. It looks so strange. And so this fun house mirror distortion obviously is just because of that cornea. So you as a surgeon, as you do this, you just have to focus on what's important here and not be distracted by that peripheral distortion in the cornea. That distortion, again, is because of that cornea transplant, and that's that interface zone, the graft host zone. So a surgeon's going to do a nice job here removing the nucleus and taking, that, uh, taking his time here. Obviously, very talented, very experienced surgeon. A couple important pearls here. If you're going to do cataract surgery on a patient with a prior cornea transplant, number one, let's talk about lens calculations. How are you going to measure the cornea? Well, do your usual topography, tomography, your keratometry, and see what you come up with. But of all the devices you get, look carefully at the central three millimeters of the cornea. That's what's most important. And in that zone, figure out what's the lowest corneal power. Why? Because I don't want the patient to end up hyperopic. So what I'm going to do is look in that central zone, and we want to find that lowest corneal power. Use that for your lens calculations. And then even on top of that, maybe aim for a little bit of minus. This patient, like you, was a little myopic to begin with. And as a result, you want the patient to return there. Now, do you do a toric lens or not? Well, if it's really a patient that has a beautifully healthy, golden-looking cornea with a great endothelial cell count and pachymetry is fine and has very regular astigmatism, especially in that central 3 to 5 millimeter zone, then sure, a toric lens can actually be pretty good. But remember, if you're putting a toric lens in a patient who, ha who has an irregular cornea and now the patient goes and wants to wear a hard contact lens, what are you doing? The hard contact lens is now effectively going to unmask your toric lens power. So now your patient's going to have to have either a compound contact lens with a special toric power on the front to mitigate your toric IOL, or the rigid contact lens is going to unmask that toricity and they'll have to wear glasses to fix that. So keep this in mind. If your patient intends to go back to wearing a rigid gas permeable contact lens, and a lot of them do, I tend to not put a toric lens in the eye. Just do a spherical lens, aim for some little residual myopia. Again, take into account what the other eye is so they don't have too much anisometropia, and then you'll be fine. So here we go, removing all the cortex. This looks great. But yeah, that's the distortion. The distortion here is because of the cornea, and you can see it looks a little odd during some of these procedures, but you as an experienced surgeon are able to take care of that. Look how the, the tip of the eye probe changes so much as he puts it in the eye past that zone. So it looks great here, time for the lens, and the rest of the case is pretty normal. Also keep in mind, if you are doing surgery, cataract surgery in a patient with a cornea transplant, you need to avoid damaging the endothelium even more. And you can definitely damage it. And so these patients already with the transplant already have a lower endothelial cell count. So you want to be very cautious, use plenty of dispersive viscoelastic to protect that cornea, recode it if you need to, and then um, try to operate away from that cornea operate more in the bag or do a technique like we saw in this case. Here comes the lens. Again, it looks really all, really distorted there as it goes in. A little bit stuck in the injector. We'll get that flipped over. Make sure you have the correct orientation. That is correct. Looks great. And get that dialed in. This patient's going to have a really nice outcome. Last thing here is when you're doing the sealing of the incision, 
Be very cautious. Don't do some mega hydration. If you hydrate so forcefully, you can, right at the incision, you can actually end up going and splitting that graft host junction. And you don't want to do that. So very cautious and being very ginger and gentle on the hydration there of the incision. And if you need to, hey, put a stitch in the eye. In some cases of the cornea transplant, if it's a big graft, very large diameter, I'll even just do a scleral tunnel. Notice how this surgeon did a beautiful job, Dr. Omar here from, from Case Western. Very important, did not let the phaco incision come near or intersect the graft host junction. So again, in a case like this, either do an incision like you see here or do a scleral tunnel, but the end looks fantastic. Great case, thank you for again, and thank you guys for watching.